Go Island, we are at Rath Trevor Provincial Park. The Brant Festival in Parksville Qualicum is underway and we are talking Brant geese with park naturalist Allison Roberts. Coming up today on Go Island, composing for the world from here in Nanaimo. David Lenham's top 10 in music, rapid fire with Nanaimo Clippers team captain and This Week in BC. That and more today on Go. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. We picked a pretty good day to come to Rath Trevor Beach. The waters here are filled with brand geese and we're going to talk about what is so special and unique and how we can help them do what they need to do later on this edition of Go Island. In the meantime, we're throwing things over to Rayanne LaPlante. She introduces us to a local composer who has had an opportunity to create a theme song for the Super Bowl. Rayanne uh, visits his home to take us through the creative process of composing songs. Wow. Oh, there's, oh no, that's Staz. <laughs> You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. This is Allison Roberts. She's a park naturalist concerned because you see a guy walking directly out towards the geese. Yep, we turn our backs for a moment and somebody's heading down to the beach. We're going to talk a little bit later about things that you should and shouldn't do when the Brent geese are here, but first we're going to find out what is so special about the goose itself. What is so special about this little goose? Well, I'll just tell you some facts about them. Okay. They're a small goose. They look a little bit like a Canada goose, but they're missing that chin strap. They have a ring around their neck instead, but they're kind of that same sort of dark color, pretty small head, little beak. So if you see what looks like a little black goose out there, you're probably seeing a brant goose, especially at this time of year. Now the Canada goose can be quite aggressive, not so with the brant oh, geese. Oh, the brant geese, we say they're a flighty goose. They're very <laughs> nervous. You get anywhere near them and they are gonna take flight which is one of the reasons why humans have a large impact on them. Now, most of the time when we see them, they're eating, they're looking okay. for food. And that's um, what they're doing now here. And what are they eating? They're eating eelgrass. And if you've ever been to the intertidal zone, like when the tide goes way out and you see that looks like long, thick green grass, it's actually growing with roots under in, in the ocean, that's eelgrass. And that's the main food source for the brant. They'll also eat sea lettuce and some other uh, seaweed, but that eelgrass is going to provide them with a lot of energy. Okay, it is cold out here and we're sniffling and our eyes are watering. Um, is it unique for the geese to be here? Do you see them on the mainland? Would you see them down in Victoria? Would you see them up near Campbell River? Well, we say they're traveling up the coast and you're going to see them in areas along the coast where there's eelgrass beds and okay. there's less and less eelgrass beds healthy in bays. It, it tends to be that where they find their food source is also where humans like to hang out and spend time, which that interaction is a problem. But you'll see the Oceanside area has some very fantastic habitat for them to be in and feeding. So we see a lot of them in the Parksville Qualicum area, but they are traveling up the entire uh, west coast, up the Pacific Flyway, basically. In flocks of two to three thousand. Oh, yeah, there's thousands of them. And, and uh, you can come down to the beach sometimes and see, you know, a couple thousand of them all here together. Wow. They kind of, they spend their nights sleeping out further out in the ocean, just kind of bobbing around and then They'll, they'll come in when they get their first sort of view of the, the tide dropping and they're going to be sort of preening doing the stuff that birds do. <laughs> and then once the exposed areas of, of their food sources arrive as the tide's going out, then they're going to start to be feeding. And the whole idea is for them to get as fat as possible. Yeah, so <laughs> unlike us, a very healthy goose is a very plump goose. So you want this big, they say you want to see a saggy abdomen because they are flying all the way up to like the Arctic to... Alaska and beyond and they won't stop and eat on they're, the they're way eating along the way they're okay. I mean their life their life is pretty amazing on this trip up there they are stopping and eating and feeding and fattening up because they also need the energy to reproduce they're going up there to have their nests and, and lay their eggs and then on the the other half of their life they fly all the way back down south they do that in one flight wow. and then they feed down Baja California Mexico Wow, okay, well, we're gonna come back and we'll talk more about why it's so important to keep your dogs off the beach. The Brant Festival is running until April the 21st. And if you could hear the sounds that the birds are making here right now, it would just add a whole other layer to your experience. And the song is beautiful, but I don't think it's making David Lenham's top 10 list. 
still ahead today on Go Island. Rapid fire with Trevor Fitzgerald, Nanaimo Clippers team captain, and This Week in BC with Sean Leslie. That and more still ahead today on Go Island. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4 and we're here at Rath Trevor Provincial Park on the beach talking Brant geese because the Brant Festival runs through until April the 21st. There's a lot of activities, a lot of information that you can participate in gathering. You can visit the website brantfestival.ca for a full listing of all the things Brant in this year's festival. This is Allie Roberts. She is a park naturalist working out of the Rath Trevor Nature House today and I've seen Allie in the past and people have their dogs on their beach or they're running up and you get kind of irked at that. Yeah it's a little bit frustrating and I hope it's because people just don't know the impact that they're having when they're at the beach especially at this time of year. What impact do they have? Well, the, the brant geese need to feed. They right. need to eat as much as possible. And since they, they are so easily disturbed, if we go to the beach, and especially if we let our dog run loose, or even if we go too close to the geese, they're going to take off. And then they might not return in time to have their food that's uncovered by the low tide. And they have to deal with enough already, because it's not just people. We saw an eagle swoop in yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, that was crazy that all the geese seemed totally relaxed and then all of a sudden an eagle came flying from way far away and eagles can be a predator of the geese so they have to take flight to be safe and protected and so yeah they're dealing with natural causes that they have to leave and disturb their feeding so we might think i mean i i'm a bit of a rebel sometimes and i Ooh. might think what you know i'm gonna walk on the beach i have my dog you know it's one little how much of an impact is it really going to have? Well, is... I mean, we have a way of teaching this to children that I think is actually a good way to teach it to adults in that the brant geese, for them to get the food, it's life or death. If they don't build enough fat and energy stores, they will die. They won't be able to reproduce. And I always ask people when they're arguing about being on the beach, I say, is it life or death for you and your dog to be on the beach at this time of year? Yeah. And if the answer is yes, that's something totally different. But I think the answer is usually no. Is the risk of the brant goose becoming extinct? Well, their numbers are are dwindling. There's the problem where not only is there the disturbance for the sur survival, but there's also the impact of, of humans destroying the habitat for the eelgrass that they need to feed on. Because unlike the Canada goose, who you said will eat just about anything, the brant are a little bit more well, particular and, with and, it. <laughs> yeah, and, and the Canada geese themselves are a problem because they also will eat the eelgrass, but what the brant do is they sort of nibble on the tops. They're kind of farmers, so they take the tops of the eelgrass and they leave the roots in and the eelgrass continues to grow, whereas the Canada goose just rip it out and they actually are depleting the eelgrass themselves, so they're competing with the brant geese mm. as well. The, the fact that everything is connected and it's all one big circle that, you know, the, the brant can't exist without the eelgrass and, and everything is has an impact on, on the next in line. Oh, exactly. And I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we saw the herring spawn going on and the, the, the herring row is actually uh, a key ingredient to their diet as well. The brant are feeding on the eggs that are attached to the eelgrass and the other seaweed. It's sort of like, I liken it to, if you're going to eat an ice cream sundae, it's way better if you add a whole bunch of stuff on top. So eelgrass is great, but you add all those herring eggs on there and it's like <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I think the classes that you give to the kids at the nature houses, both here at Rath Trevor and in Goldstream would be very entertaining and we'll partake in one of those on a future edition of Go Island. We're going to throw things over now to Dan Marshall. It's another installment of Rapid Fire with the Clippers captain. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. We're here at Rath Trevor Beach. We're talking Brant because the Brant Festival is currently underway. It runs through until the 21st. Now it's a festival that might be a little bit challenging to get your head around, your planning around, because first of all, it's about a goose that flies around and you're never guaranteed that they're going to be in the spot we lucked out today here at Rath Trevor that you want them to be when you want them to be. But there's a, such a wide range of activities and, and purposes of those activities. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And I mean, it's, it's the Brant Festival and it came on of the idea that the Brant migrating through this area, there's people just need to know a little bit more about it so we know our impact. But 
the festival itself is really a festival about appreciating nature and getting to know the, the natural surroundings and just the impact that we have as a part of the nature. We're part of the nature that's here. Because you can't look at brown geese and learn about them without learning about their habitat and their environment and, and all of the different parts that go along with that. We've talked about kids nature camps, but there's activities for grown-ups too. Oh yeah, there's lots of activities going on from free family activities to uh, paid tours for adults. Um, the website is full of a, a list of activities that goes right through till April 21st, I think it is. Now, who organizes it? Because talking from a sort of behind the scenes, trying to get someone to speak about the festival, and I'm sure glad that we were able to get in contact with you, Allison. But who oversees the whole thing? Because it seems cooperative, really. Well, it is. I mean, the Nature Trust of BC is responsible for the festival. So they're sort of the d directing the festival itself. But this festival is really a community effort. It takes, there's, I mean, I don't even know all of the groups that are participating, whether it's putting on events, whether it's offering um, deals during the festival to attract tourism to the area, whether it's, um, I mean, there's one, artists, who... there's artists that are demonstrating everything, so much going on. And I think that's sort of the idea of everybody coming together. We're celebra celebrating the amazing little migrating goose that needs our help, but it's also getting everybody together and being like, wow, look at this place that we live in. You, you inspire me. You're just so passionate about the work that you do. How did you get into working in the parks and sharing your love of nature with others? Well, by being inspired by others, really. I love biology, I, high school, university. I loved my classes where I was learning about the natural world. That was exciting to me. But then my first summer job in university was working as a park interpreter. And I worked alongside a few amazing naturalists. And just watching them do what I now do, I was like, that's what I want to do. Thank you for doing it. No problem. <laughs> if you'd like a full listings of what goes on in all of its forms at the Brent Festival, you can visit the website. And once again, thanks to Allison for joining us on this edition of Go Island. We're going to throw things over now to Sean Leslie. It's This Week in BC. That brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. I'd like to make a slight correction. The Brant Festival website, which you see on the screen right now, is brantfestival.bc.ca, and you can get a full listing of all of the activities taking place from now right through until April the 21st. Thanks for watching. Respect the geese. We'll see you next time.